Hi guys, this is Bruno Gobato, orthopedic surgeon from Brazil. And I'm going to show in this video, this is going to be a live video, uh, showing how we can plan a clavicle fracture. This is a lady that has a clavicle fracture for five months, so it's almost like a non-union fracture, is very displaced. So uh, the first step we choose is to open the DICOM files from the CT scan. I'm using a Mac computer for, for this purpose and I'm using the Horus software. Horus is a uh, free software you can download from, uh, from the internet and you just need to open the DICOM files from the CD scan from the CT scan and then save as a STL 3D file. But let's go to what it's important. Let's go in, let's show uh, how we can plan a surgery in real time. For planning a surgery, we need a CAD software. Uh, this is my personal choice. I like uh, a software called Rhino, Rhinoceros. It's a software for Mac and Windows. So I'm going to show uh, how it works. So here we have the views. I'm going to choose import and I'm going to import the fragments from the CT scan. So let's go here to the, um, the folder. I'm going to import first the, let, the medial fragment. Let's click open, import, OK. Here is the medial fragment. I'm going to change colors. I'm going to change to uh, yellow in order to understand better the, the fragments. And I'm going to choose import again and I'm going to import now the lateral fragment. So here we have the lateral fragment. Let's choose import and now we have the both fragments. Now I'm going to select both and I'm going to move to a better location. As you can see here, I'm going to center in the top view. Let's choose here the front view where, oh, it's far away. Let's move to the center of our software. Okay. And here is in the center as well. So here is the clavicle and here is how it is. It's understandable that it will not heal has a shortening and a very displaced fracture. This is the lateral fragment, this is the medial fragment. You can see here that the CT scan uh, did not scan well the proximal and the, and the, the distal part because it's a very uh, cancellous bone, but it doesn't matter for us. So here we have the original, okay? I'm going to select again both, and I'm going to rotate them in order to be in the best position in, uh, to, to reduce the fracture. So I think it's almost okay. Let's, let's rotate again. Let's rotate a little bit like that. And I think we are okay. So this is the original file. I'm going to save. Original. Okay. Now let's reduce the fracture. Okay, I'm going to duplicate. I always like to have all the steps saved, so I'm going to save uh, reducing. Okay, uh, here we can use to check some measurements. We can go here to analyze and distance, and we can check, for example, the displacement. We can select here the inferior part and the inferior part. And we can see that we have 2.9 uh, millimeters displacement. We can analyze the distance in any location. For example, this uh, posterior or uh, anterior view. There is no matter. We can look for, for example, this from here to here. And we see we have uh, 13 millimeters in distance. So this is a 3D measurement. We can measure in any views. We can try measuring as well the, the shortening, but for this case, uh, it's not important. Now let's try reduce the fracture. We can reduce by using the medial or the lateral fragment. Uh, 
Generally, we try to reduce using the lateral fragment. So for this purpose, I'm going to move a little bit up. Okay. I'm going to move a little bit like that. Okay. Uh, it's, it's almost okay. But this is something that we see uh, very often. Uh, we have the rotation. We should check. I think the rotation is not that good and we can see this is not entirely correct reduce yet. We can change for example uh, the, the rotation in this view a little bit. We can rotate a little bit also the medial fragment and we can recheck if everything is alright. So here, I think we have almost like a good reduction. I'm going to move a little far away to check. Okay, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not okay yet. I really think we choose, we need to rotate uh, the lateral fragment. So let's try doing that. Here is the tip, sometimes uh, if you want to rotate in one view and uh, it's, it's, it, it doesn't rotate in the, in the axis we want, we can just create any object right here, near to the object you want to rotate, for example this, and then we select the both objects and now we can rotate the lateral fragment a little bit up and I think we are almost okay. I really think that rotating this fragment up, we now should have inclination displacement. And I think we are almost done. We should now rotate a little bit through this axis and reduce the fracture for the best fitting position. Remembering this is a uh, non-union fracture, so uh, the reduction will be not uh, perfect. We should try to do our best for the shortening and for the correct position of the clavicle. Um, let's check again here how it's, how it's done. I think we still have some misalignment in the rotation. I'm quite not sure we are in correct position. I'm going to rotate a little bit up just like that. I'm going to rotate a little bit more. It's normal to see this and we should now move a little bit down and we should have a better reduction okay I think we are pretty much reduced without shortening and without displacement we can we could have uh, a better contact if we want we just shortening a little bit as we can see here to make sure everything is okay and we could align a little bit better if we want like this rotate a little bit and move upwards I think we have uh, I think our reduction was is worst right now so let's go back I think this is better so when we are okay with our reduction, we can choose our plates. So here we have the plates, um, the locket plates. I have already drawn. Let's select, I really like the longest plate generally. Let's, let's see if it fits well. I'm going to rotate in order to be in a better position again, like that. Okay. Let's place the plate 
uh, remembering let's put in the correct the best fitting position this is a left plate actually let's change for a right plate okay I think it's okay now we can check the correct position for the plate and if we are okay with that our planning is done. We can go a little bit lateral or we can go a little bit medium. Uh, maybe this plate is a little it's larger than we need. Let's check if we can have uh, another plate but for this non-union I prefer uh, larger plates. Let's check this plate. Okay, remembering this is the left plate, so let's change for the right plate, it's just mirroring it. Okay, let's move upwards. Um, I'm not okay, this plate is more for the lateral fragment, so this is not okay for us. Let's change plate again, so this plate is not good. Let's try this plate. Okay, rotate. This should be better. Okay. We have a better position with this plate. Now we just need to check if we are okay with the screws. So in the middle part I should have three locket screws and one uh, cortical, good cortical screw and for the lateral part I should have here three locket, good locket screws and one uh, cortical screw. I think I'm okay with this plate so I'm going to select this plate, I'm going to move away and I think we are done. We can check if all the screws are in the, the best position. I really think they are very in the middle in the bone. So here we have our uh, plan uh, done. We could just now uh, take pictures or saving this plan. We can, for example, remove the plate and only look for the, the screws, for example. So I can, for example, remove the plate and make sure where the screw should be. This is very interesting uh, in order to make sure we are in the correct position during our surgery. And we can even create a patient-specific guide to help us place uh, the screws. I'm going to show how easy it's done. So let's just change color. I'm going to, to delete the medial fragment. I'm going to delete the middle uh, screws. I'm going to choose these two screws as reference. Just let's uh, create a box here over the superior part of the lateral fragment. I think that's okay. Let's align to the fragment. I think it could be a little bit longer. I think it's in uh, okay position. Just select the plate, mesh, Boolean operation, difference, let's select the clavicle fragment, let's hit OK. So we now have here the mask, as you can see, and now just this, let's do this again with the screws, and hit OK, and now you can see here that we have a patient-specific guide, this is a small box, it will be a small box that will fit into the lateral fragment, and tell us exactly where the two screws should be. And why doing this? Uh, this will help us make sure the plate is in its ideal position. So if we place uh, that screws of that plate in this correct position, we are sure that the plate will be in all the all, all along the, the, the clavicle energy, we should have a good reduction. So we just need to export to our 3D printing. 
maybe you were listening. I'm 3D printing right now over there. We have a 3D printer and I a 3D printer here and just next to me we have another 3D printing we are printing the fragments for this patient and now we just need to export this guide and plate and print so thank you for this video this is a very simple very homemade video with no uh, edits with no uh, cosmetic uh, cautions we just know to, we, we just would like to show how easy and how can be done, uh, how we can plan a simple uh, uh, correction. This is, a, this is a simple surgery, but this could be done better if we plan in our computer. So, my name again is Bruno Gobato. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.